the side effects can stack up pretty crazily. You know, I hate seeing those people on TikTok saying it's side effect free. I've already attacked them. This is one of those compounds that it's really good, but can get out of hand if you don't know all that you're messing with. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907. Check it out, 1907wire.com, coupon code Russo. And the ASMR spritz noises, intelligent elephant carbon. Discount below, coupon code Russo. This oversized shirt, coupon code Russo. All the other coupon code Russos are in the pinned comment below if you wanna support this comment. Welcome back to Pedication. Today, I'm gonna be half covering MK677. I have over 40 minutes of content on MK677 already that I'll have Andrew throw up here, but more importantly, link in the description because there's two extremely long videos where I go into all the side effects no one talks about, but I wanted to include it in this video, right? I wanted to include it in the Pedication series. Watch those videos on two times speed. I'm not gonna go into that detail and make this video over an hour long. I'm gonna talk about the gist of it as well as go into the little bit about the side effects but i go into great detail already with the one already having close to 50,000 views i spent a lot of time reading on the phone before making that video and i'm just going to go through it the normal education way this is the anabolics book 11th edition as the source let's get started mk677 ibutamorin was first developed by Patchett in 1995. Unlike all the other GH secretagogues, this was an oral administration through the ghrelin mimetic pathway. So this mimics hunger hormone and acts on the ghrelin receptors to cause a GH response. If you don't know what ghrelin is, it's hunger hormone. You are basically fucking around with the hunger hormone system, which again, fucks around with the fight or flight nervous system, right? When you're super hungry, you get fight or flighty and you're all playing with that to cause a GH dump on command. So that is the whole attractive factor of MK677 abutamorin is that it's not one of these GH secretagogues that are injectable. It's oral administration has great bioavailability and it's extremely potent. It was then picked up by the big pharmaceutical company Merck to cover GH deficiencies. All that stuff with GH deficiencies, that's why the research got funded further and further. So that's pretty much all I got out of the source. I'm gonna go into how it's used in bodybuilding. So MK677 is extremely attractive for even professional bodybuilders because there's apparently, again, I'm not very well versed on this, but there's like four or five different types of growth hormone in the body. When you inject growth hormone, you're only replacing one of them. GH goes through the pituitary and is going to release all the growth hormones. So the other thing that makes it attractive for pro bodybuilders or any aggressive bodybuilder with PD pharmacology in general is that if you use 677 alongside regular GH, you are not shutting down your GH system, meaning you're still getting around that negative feedback loop of, oh, I inject GH, my natural GH isn't going to secrete anymore. Nope, not with MK677. It's like basically a manual controller, the same way HCG is for the nuts, right? You can still fire the pituitary off to secrete GH while on GH. So again, normal GH pulse is anywhere from six-ish hour half-life, you know, with the MK677 with injecting GH could be, you know, around an hour to two hours maybe, right? So there are benefits to putting MK677 on top of your GH. Now the big problem with MK677 is with that six hour-ish window. I mean, if you look at the graphs, right, the tails are very much extended out to six hours with the meat and potatoes being, you know, a little bit below that. But basically you're gonna be causing so much insulin resistance from having GH constantly pulsed all day while firing your hunger hormone right so you're hungry and insulin resistance meaning if you're going to be eating tons and tons of carbs you're never going to get satisfied eating the carbs and you're going to be racking up a blood glucose level that will put you pre-diabetic or diabetic which could stress your pancreas out if you're constantly doing that not understanding that side effect needs to be mitigated with glucose disposal agents such as i'll have andrew throw them up gorilla mine glucose disposal agent or enhanced slim pills so those would help in the fact that you know getting rid of that excess blood glucose in the blood but that is one of the big things that's like 
when I see online, oh, MK677 has no side effects. It's like, there's a lot of things at play. There's a lot of things at play when you're fucking around with ghrelin. When you're fucking around with the hunger hormone system to cause a GH response, you're also fucking around with the fight or flight nervous system. And I'll have Andrew throw up the MK677 like terror study I did in the other video. I'm just rapidly summarizing here is that you will be in a heightened state of anxiety. And if you're chronically doing 677, you could cause, you know, a little bit of paranoia, panic attack, honestly, in my opinion, in the higher dosages, obviously 10, 20 milligrams, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about 30 to 50 milligrams, like some of these guys online are doing, you're going to run into the constant state of paranoia, tear, the constant fight or flight, overactive on that nervous system side, and that could lead towards mood changes. And if you're combining that with any synthetic androgen on top of the aggression you're now in a panicky paranoia you know hungry can't be satisfied state now not everyone is impacted by mk677 the same way some people don't get the hunger at all other people it's insane so not everyone reacts the same to the ghrelin pathway Personally, I'm extremely sensitive to it, right? I will get hunger cramps if I take a high enough dosage of 677 to where I could never cut on it. Where other people can cut on it just fine, I cannot cut on it whatsoever. It has to be immediately dropped if I wanna lose weight. The next thing is the water weight gain is pretty much problematic in accordance to blood pressure issues, right? Because I've seen people put on 15 pounds of water with 677 not you know, utilizing their glucose correctly and not realizing they're insulin resistant think of all that water going on the heart so definitely don't want to be slacking as far as keeping up with all the 677 side effects if you're going to use it especially if you're going to use it in a bodybuilding sense i'm mostly talking about aggressive uses of 677 10 milligram morning 10 milligram night or 20 milligram morning 20 milligram night in a fasted state you know i don't see that being that problematic other than the hunger increase and as long as you don't binge carbs around that time you won't be racking up the insulin resistance but the reason why 677 shines in my opinion is you can get this constant trickle pulse of gh so a 10 milligram 10 milligram 10 milligram 10 milligram you know dosage spread out throughout the day that's a constant trickle but you basically permanently shut off the insulin side if you're doing that now if you're already a bodybuilder on gh and you're doing that protocol on top with insulin, that's where even pro bodybuilders have noticed a difference in that weird, like, oh, there's five different types of growth hormone, they notice better fullness. So that's something to note. I wouldn't really be using this long-term as far as activating the gorilla in the fight or flight state in the brain. You could put put in a permanent state that's something i haven't you know disregarded every time i went abusing 677 i noticed paranoia i noticed a little bit more of obviously a heightened state of fight or flight and it overall made me drowsy down but in a paranoia state so i had like insulin resistance grogginess on top of the paranoia state so that was with me dosing 40 to 50 milligrams a day so the side effects can stack up pretty crazily you know i hate seeing those people on tiktok saying it's side effect free i've already attacked them this is one of those compounds that it's really good but can get out of hand if you don't know all that you're messing with right you're messing with the hunger hormone pathway then you're messing with the fight or flight system in the brain then you're also messing with insulin resistance in the pancreas and this is all compounding as you're binging carbs from spiking your ghrelin aka hunger hormone through the roof and if you react to ghrelin all these things make it problematic how is it beneficial you get insane muscle fullness you get insane recovery you get the ability to bulk easily because you're adding synthetic hunger hormone all the time it's not like ghrp6 where you have to inject just a oral administration very convenient and you get these trickle pulses of six hours of gh which makes it very very cheap when you put it on the cost bang for buck scale right gh is pretty fucking expensive good quality six seven Seven, seven comes in around a hundred ish dollars you're comparing a hundred ish dollar product that can get you up to like i'll say like 1.8 ius a day of gh is what your pituitary can secrete at 50 milligrams a day versus you know one to two ius of pharma or you know generic right you're still talking like hundreds of dollars versus a cheap product
that is oral administration being the key factor. 677 shouldn't be discounted as one of the coolest PEDs that's out there. If it's not abused in a bodybuilding situation, aka 10 to 20 milligrams a day, I don't see any of the craziness that I talked about becoming a thing. But there is a reason to go to 30 to 50 a day, right? There is a reason for the guys who are willing to risk it for the biscuit and to get after there with the aggressive type PED approaches MK677 does have some sort of slotting in if you can keep the insulin resistance under control and it actually slots on top of GH which has your natural GH pulse while you're injecting GH so you're getting double the amount of IGF GH output and you're getting five different types of GH that are coming out of the pituitary plus you're synthetically injected one form of GH. It's very, very, you know, interesting to see how 677 has like made itself a staple in the PED realm. It's not interesting to see how the lack of education on harm mitigation of this compound is going to have people insulin resistant, possibly developing, you know, pre-diabetic or diabetic conditions, right? If you were to binge carbs on 677 for up to a year, you could kill all the beta cells in your pancreas theoretically and become diabetic. I mean, this is serious side effects. This is not something to take lightly. I hate seeing that it has no side effects. You could fuck up your circadian rhythm by firing ghrelin randomly. Think about fucking up your sleep schedule. Like, Andrew, you just take 677 at night, you take a big dosage, and now you're in fight or flight hunger mode are you gonna sleep good is that gonna push your circadian rhythm around yeah i used to become insomnia when i would do the insane 677 dosings because i knew i was messing with the fight or flight system by constantly pounding ghrelin i'm pounding a ghrelin mimetic like people need to know the methods of action and then you realize how to harm mitigate your protocol i already did 40 minutes talking about it and I'll finish off with this. MK677 can cause prolactin-based gyno. It can cause gyno. It can also cause suppression of natural testosterone, meaning I wouldn't use a ghrelin mimetic if I was completely natural. It could end you up with a lower testosterone score, especially if you're ending with the prolactin-based gyno, which will cause a negative feedback loop for your natural testosterone and suppress you down to try and choke out that prolactin-based gyno. That's another thing I see, is that there's no chance of gyno with 677. It's actually a very easy chance of prolactin-based gyno with 677, and people probably won't realize it's more prolactin-based and think it's estrogen-based, and they'll be using the wrong compounds to try and combat that. I heavily recommend you switch my slow talking to two times speed and you watch the 677 videos I already did. This is kind of the general overview. If you want the more advanced me rambling about my own experiments forever, please go check out the other videos. I will see you guys in my next one.